Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the subcommittee, good morning. My name is Fabri Storr, and I work at Goldman Sachs International in London. Thank you for the opportunity to appear today in front of the subcommittee. I've worked at Goldman Sachs since 2001. Between 2004 and 2007, my job was primarily to make markets for clients. I made markets by connecting clients who wished to take a long exposure to an asset, meaning they anticipated the value of the asset would rise, with clients who wished to take a short exposure to that asset, meaning they anticipated the value of the asset would fall. I was an intermediary between highly sophisticated professional investors, all of which were institutions. None of my clients were individual retail investors. The structured products on which I worked fill an important need for these sophisticated financial institutions. To the average person, the utility of these products may not be obvious, but they permit sophisticated institutions to customize the exposure they wish to take in order to better manage the credit and market risks of their investment holdings. Mr. Chairman, as you know, the Securities and Exchange Commission recently filed a civil suit alleging that I failed to disclose to investors certain material information regarding a transaction that I helped to structure named Abacus 07 AC1. I deny categorically the SEC's allegations, and I will defend myself in court against this false claim. Since the suit was filed, there have been many questions raised about the AC1 transaction and my role in it. I appreciate the opportunity to answer those questions, and I want to make a few points absolutely clear. First, the only two investors in the transaction, ACA and IKB, were institutions with significant resources and extensive experience in the CDO market. Second, I never told ACA, the portfolio selection agent, that Paulson and company would be an equity investor in the AC1 transaction or would take any long position in the deal. Although I don't recall the exact words I used, I recall informing ACA that Paulson's fund was expected to buy credit protection on some of the senior tranches in this deal. This necessarily meant that Paulson was expected to take some short position in the transaction. Moreover, from the early stages of the transaction in January 2007 to its completion several months later, none of the offering documents provided to ACA indicated that Paulson's fund would be an equity investor. If ACA was confused about Paulson's roles in the transaction, it had every opportunity to clarify the issue. Representative of Paulson's fund participated directly in all of my meetings with ACA regarding the transaction. I do not ever recall ACA asking me or Paulson's representatives if Paulson's fund would be an equity investor. Indeed, ACA and Paulson had several discussions about the transaction and at least one meeting without Goldman Sachs representatives present. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that ACA could have believed that the Paulson Fund was an equity or long investor in this deal. Third, the AC1 transaction was not designed to fail. AC and IKB were two of the most important clients to my desk. Moreover, the securities referenced in the transaction did not underperform the other securities of that ratings class and vintage. In fact, all those securities performed poorly because the subprime mortgage market suffered a broad collapse. Goldman Sachs also had no economic motive to design the AC1 transaction to fail. Quite the contrary, we held long exposure in the transaction just like ACA and just like IKB. When the securities referenced in AC1 declined in value, we lost money too, including around $83 million with respect to the retained long position. Finally, ACA selected the portfolio of securities referenced in the transaction, not Paulson. ACA had sole authority to decide what securities would be referenced in the transaction, and it does not dispute that fact. Neither the Paulson Fund nor Goldman Sachs could dictate to ACA the securities referenced in the deal. Paulson's funds made suggestions to ACA, as did IKB and as did Goldman Sachs. And the SEC complaint concedes that ACA rejected most of Paulson's suggestion while accepting others. So while Paulson, Goldman Sachs, and IKB all had inputs in the reference portfolio for AC1, ACA ultimately analyzed and approved each security in the transaction. Thus, when Goldman Sachs represented to investors that ACA selected the reference portfolio, 
that statement was absolutely correct. Mr. Chairman, the last week has been challenging for me and my family as I have been the target of unfounded attacks on my character and motives. I appreciate the opportunity to appear before the subcommittee to answer these false charges. I wish to repeat, I did not mislead IKB or ACA, two of the most sophisticated institutional investors in these products anywhere in the world. I will be pleased to answer any questions that the subcommittee may have.